What is a complete human? Is it a cover model? Is it a science geek? Is it a fitness expert? Or all of the above and more? Jana and Evan are crusaders that walk the earth looking at today's issues that touch our hearts and minds. The honest and hopeful outlook on the advancement of today's society. The science behind the decay of human relationships. The necessary preparations for future generations. Join us as we look deep inside ourselves and embark on a journey into becoming a complete human. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another edition of the Complete Human Podcast with your host, Jana Breslin and Evan DeMarco. Uh, for those of you who are watching this on YouTube, and I highly recommend that you, if you're not, you head on over to YouTube, you're going to see that I have a blue tongue. <laughs> and for those of you out there, and we know who you are, who have the, uh, you know, have the humor that I do, which is pretty much of a 13 year old, <laughs> you can forego the, uh, you know, innuendo that I had sexual relations with a Smurf. And we are going to talk about uh, really brain health. And we're going to talk about it in a way that I got to be honest, prior to this podcast, I'd, I'd heard a lot about this. I've seen the blue tongues out there. Uh, but there's an element of this particular product that we're going to talk about in brain health, in brain stimulation, and some of the elements that we've really discussed in optimizing brain function um, in, a, in a specific ingredient that's very controversial, and that's nicotine. Very controversial. Yeah. And so we are stoked to have, depending on where you're located in the country, Dr. <laughs> Scott Share or Sure, or if you're in the Midwest, you can just fucking make it up. It doesn't matter. <laughs> I respond uh, to most anything. Cool. Honest, Dr. Scott, <laughs> thanks for joining us. Yeah, Dr. Scott is perfect. It's nice to see you guys and thank you for having me. And yes, your tongue will be blue. And we like to say, Evan, it's blue is the new smart. So it's not, well, maybe you did have sexual relations with the Smurf. Maybe you didn't, but you're smarter <laughs> regardless. And that's the most important part. Uh, uh, everybody just go ahead and, you know, get the jokes out of the way and then we'll just carry on. Oh, we uh, use Dr. them so much. Uh, we have so many, so much good, fu good fun with the word blue and bluing mm -hmm. yourself and bluing others, bluing your friends, the ones you love, blue yourself on Sunday, blue yourself in the morning. I mean, I can keep going, you know, yeah. I have lots of good ones, but should you blue yourself at night? <laughs> it depends. Okay. It depends because well, we have two nootropics, one that has stimulants in them and one that does not. The one that does not have stimulants in them, that one you can take at night. It still makes your tongue blue okay. because of the methylene blue that's in both of those products. Mm. But well, before we get into the appropriate time to blue yourself, um, <laughs> why don't you give our audience a little bit of background on who you are and the company, obviously, that you're representing as we talk about why my tongue is blue, not from blowing a Smurf. <laughs> He said it finally. I was he waiting did. for it. Okay. <laughs> I just so, had to get it out of the way. Yeah, I, I, I felt you really needed to say it there, Evan. Um, and I've, I've said it many times in some of our the things that we've written. So, um, but yes, my name is, is Dr. Scott Schur. I'm a board certified internal medicine physician. And Troscriptions is my company. It's a word that comes from the word trochi, which is a type of formulation that's a little square lozenge type of thing that goes in your mouth and dissolves over about 15 to 20 minutes. And the second part of the word is from prescriptions, which we all know you get prescribed by a doctor. And so the words mashed up together are transcriptions. And there's actually four clinicians involved, all of us MDs actually, in the company. And so we're really emphatic about all of our products being precision dosed, being pharmaceutical grade, and they're all physician formulated. So myself and my colleagues, along with sort of our master bluer, as I call him, and our master formulator, Dr. Ted Achikoso, who's the pioneer of the company, the starter of the company. I operate as the chief operating officer of transcriptions. And so we've been around for almost a year and a half now. I think we actually started, we launched Blue Canatine, our first nootropic, the month right before the pandemic started to ramp up in February, 2020. So definitely had a different first year than we anticipated, but it's been a great year actually a great year and a half now. And we came out with a second product in June of 2020 called Just Blue, which is pure methylene blue. And I'm sure we'll talk about that as well. And we have more products coming down the pipeline as well. All of them with the same ethos, which is again, precision dosing, pharmaceutical grade, and all tested by ourselves, formulated by ourselves as well. And sometimes hysterically tested, depending on the type of formula and what we're doing. And we're, we're always thinking about how we can look at uh, health and performance in a very much married in collaboration in the sense of what we're doing at our company is always uh, based on the work we do. We have a nonprofit company as well called Health Optimization Medicine. And that's a 
It's a foundational approach to health that was developed also by Dr. Ted that practitioners and doctors can actually take as a course. We've created a course that doctors and practitioners can take and they get certified in to practice a very health focused approach uh, to healthcare. Instead of thinking about disease and root cause, we're more focused on health, more focused on optimizing our foundational biology, our cellular biology, et cetera. So uh, we have a nonprofit that, that part of Transcriptions actually uh, we support with Transcriptions funds as well. So. Wonderful. That's well, great. we'd love to get into that. Uh, but before we do that, let's talk a little bit again about, you know, the origins of this. Where did you guys come up with this idea that you could pair, you know, methylene blue with nicotine with, you know, optimizing the endocannabinoid system? You know, mm -hmm. where does where are the origins of this? And then how do well, well answer that? And then I, I want to get into the nicotine piece. Sure. Well, I think it all goes together, right? So the the origins of our first nootropic blue canatine really came about because of, of Dr. Ted and Dr. Ted's work with very high flying elite clientele around the world. He has a tri-continental practice. So he has Paris, DC and Manila where he kind of would fly back and forth, not stay in the same time zone more than two weeks at a time for years, for decades until the pandemic when like the first time in years that he had not been flying all over the place, but he really needed something and needed something that would get him on right away if, if he was jet lagged, if he was just getting off a plane and meeting with a head of state or a congressman or something like that. And he's a pharmacologist by training as well as like a neurologist, neuroradiologist. He's got, he's one of those dudes that just does everything and has done everything. And so he did a lot of research and brought together this formula when I met him back in 2016, where he had been toying around with things in his bathroom, as he typically does. <laughs> he has he has this like amazing scale that goes to like hundredth, a uh, hundredth degree place of decimals, like ridiculously small amounts of things that he can measure. And he knew methylene blue research was fantastic. Methylene blue, this is what makes your tongue blue in our formulas, is a product that's been around a long time. It was actually the first drug registered with the FDA back in the 1890s. And it was actually used initially for malaria because it has antiviral, antibacterial, and antifungal qualities, as well as antiprozone qualities with the malaria. But over the decades that followed, it was actually realized that it had a lot of different qualities as well, but significantly as a mitochondrial enhancer. It had about eight different ways it works to make energy more effectively produced in your mitochondria, in the cells powerhouse, your mitochondria, right? the organelle that makes all the energy. And so as a result of all that literature and all this additional literature that's been happening over the last 10 years in human studies and animal studies showing the cognitive benefits of methylene blue, that was like hands down, methylene blue needed to be in this product. And so that was the first ingredient that he was really passionate about that really needed to be in it. And then actually secondary to that was nicotine. And so nicotine, it, and we can talk about it as much detail as you'd like, we obviously know nicotine mostly from cigarettes, from tobacco containing products, from vaping products, from uh, from pipes or whatever, right? Well, I sound old with my pipe. I'm like, I'm like, <laughs> old, like I'm at like a, I'm at like a Harvard smoking my pipe. But mm -hmm. anyway, like that's how people know nicotine, and they know nicotine as being like terrible for you, being like the worst thing ever you could ever have. It's it's so addicting. It's you know you're gonna you get hooked on nicotine. Although to be honest. Doctors like me back in the 60s were in commercials smoking cigarettes for the cigarette companies, right? And so now nicotine is just one product in a cigarette, right? Or in a vaping product or in any of these other tobacco containing products. There's hundreds, if not thousands of other, pro other products that are inside these smoked products for the most part. And it's actually been shown in various studies that nicotine by itself is addictive. There's no doubt about it, but if you combine it with the additives that are in all these other products, it takes that addictive quality and takes it to another exponent, really. And then in addition to that, if you're smoking or vaping nicotine, you get an immediate hit of that nicotine in your brain. And nicotine releases a lot of different neurotransmitters when you take it, but the most important one is dopamine. You probably know dopamine as your reward neurotransmitter, right? So when you look at your phone incessantly and look and scroll through your cat videos, you're getting lots of dopamine hits <laughs> as you lots. do that, right? <laughs> lots of dopamine. And so dopamine is this instant hit, the reward that we feel. And then if we get that instantly from nicotine, it can enhance the addictive component for sure. Now, on the other side of nicotine is that it's been shown in studies that it improves memory, improves focus, it improves attention, it's neuroprotective. And actually it's been studied in Parkinson's and Alzheimer's disease patients mm -hmm. to help with cognitive potential. So 
we thought, well, we're not going to have people smoke our product. We have a trochee, right, which we can talk about too. These are these lozenges that I mentioned that dissolve over 15 to 20 minutes. And that's a slow release formula. It releases over 15 to 20 minutes. So you don't get an instant hit of the nicotine. You get a slow rise of that nicotine over that 15 to 20 minutes. Have you guys ever worked with or ever tried like nicotine gum or nicotine sprays or anything like that before? I yes. have not, but I think Evan has, yeah. Yeah, and, and interestingly enough, I think uh, you know, friend of yours, friend of mine, uh, Dave Asprey, uh, and we were at a uh, we were at a fundraiser or something like that, and and I'd had a couple cocktails. He's just, he's just spraying the nicotine, probably, right? So yeah, and, and so a yeah. couple cocktails, and then he, you know, he he sprays uh, sprays the nicotine spray in my mouth, and and I can say that like the experience itself was incredible. The hangover, oh my god, like you mm. know, and, and again, it could have been just the combination of of the nicotine and all the, alcohol, the alcohol or, water, potential, or yeah. just. I just yeah. had a lot of alcohol, but I remember, uh, you know, waking up in <laughs> the morning, that. like, you know, yeah, it hurt. Yeah. Interestingly with nicotine, it does constrict down blood vessels, especially if you smoke it. Uh, and, or even if you do like, or have a trochee or do a spray, it's going to mildly constrict blood vessels, but only mildly typically, but in the brain, it actually dilates blood vessels in the areas that improve cognition, which is super interesting. So Yes, it's very common in biohacker circles and others to use nicotine on its own. The challenge with nicotine, for at least for me personally, is that it's a kind of an edgy kind of product. If you, even if you let it dissolve in your mouth or do like a nicotine gum, it can give you like a little bit of a jitter kind of edge feel. But the nice thing about the way we've developed glucanotine is that we also have CBD in there as well. And the CBD in there is neuroprotective. It decreases inflammation and it, it just lets that rise be a little bit softer so that you don't feel like that sudden rise, that edginess that you might get from just taking nicotine. Nicotine is very short acting as well. It only lasts for about one or two hours typically, but we have CBD in there as well, which lengthens your, your ride with glucanotine. And then of course we have caffeine in there too. Um, caffeine, the most widely nootropic, widely used nootropic in the world is also in the formula and caffeine's half-life is longer. So that's why you were talking about what time to use nootropics or this particular nootropic. And of course, a little bit depends on your caffeine metabolism. So if you're a very fast caffeine metabolizer, you might be able to have glucanotine three, four o'clock in the afternoon or even later for some people. But if you're a slow caffeine metabolizer, then you really have to have it probably before noon so that it's out of your system before you go to bed later in the day. But caffeine tried and true, a fantastic nootropic in its own right. And then as I was mentioning, we have CBD in there for that sort of slow rise and helping you with that on-ramping. And then it also helps with the come down too, too, because you don't typically have any withdrawal after coming off the glucanotine after about three to four hours. So you get this launch of focus, creativity, verbal fluency, and it's a great for meditation actually, and also with energy, just enhancement overall. And then you have a slow come down afterwards. We don't feel like you're just, you're talking to yourself in the wall and slurring your speech or something like that. There's nothing <laughs> like that that's going to happen. So, yeah. and we developed it over actually a number of years, Evan, because it took us a long time to get the formula right. And also to, to make sure we had all the ingredients that we needed because we're using a pharmaceutical grade methylene blue because you can get a lot of methylene blue out there, but a lot of it's contaminated with heavy metals. Fish tank cleaner is actually methylene blue uh, it has a lot of methylene blue in it, but it's also contaminated with all the heavy metals you can imagine. People unfortunately drink that stuff and try to win Darwin awards. It's crazy, but um, <laughs> some of that happened after uh, some other people told everybody to inject in IVs. Like, like uh, I think it was Trump was telling people to, like to inject things in their like uh, what was it called like, like antiseptic in their veins and mm -hmm. things like that. So, but anyway, so um, methylene blue is really important to to be pharmaceutical grade, and so we wanted to get a good supply of that. We wanted to make sure that that we had a good supply for a long time as well. So that took us forever. And then our nicotine supply is also pharmaceutical grade. So it's not derived from tobacco, it's actually derived synthetically. Nicotine, uh, synthetically, it's pharmaceutical grade and we have a great supply of that and we make sure that we use that and we test that all the time. And then we have you know, our CBD, which is comes with its own certification of analysis. And then we have our, uh, our Caffeine, of course, which is you know very easy to get uh, pharmaceutical grade as well. So it took us a while to get all the ingredients. And then we had this huge pent up demand before we launched in February, 2020. We basically sold out our first run over that first weekend that we were live. We broke the internet. It was my fault. 
but that's a long story. <laughs> but um, and our, our payment system went down. It was a bit of a fiasco, but it's a good story in retrospect, of course, right? Yeah. So, um, but we've had a lot of great, a lot of really great response from it, to be honest. And and it's it's something that I use all the time, and something that that we use as clinicians in my company you know, with our clients. But the key always, though, is that if you're using stimulants, you know, nicotine and caffeine, that you understand that you are, you, you are using stimulants <laughs> and like it's an important part of the game and the process that, uh, that we always like to talk about when what, either whether our, we're marketing, whether I'm talking on podcast or whatever, like it's important to know that, you know, stimulants are good, but they also can overclock your system over time if you're not careful. Mm-hmm. So I, I want to talk a little bit about the nicotine too, because, you know, I remember, as you pointed out, you know, my grandfather in the 1950s was a little bit overweight doctor said, start smoking, it'll help you lose yeah, weight, you know, for, for so long, we kind of almost looked at nicotine, and or tobacco as a therapeutic for so many different things. Obviously, you know, things change with tobacco, we recognize that there's the inherent issue. But one of the reports that I read was that even though there was a higher incidence of uh, you know, uh, lung cancer or cardiovascular disease in smokers, there was a significantly lower incident of Alzheimer's and dementia. Um, and it sounds like nicotine might be one of the reasons for that is, is you do have this neuroprotective, this cognitive yeah, boost. Absolutely. Um, yeah. So how do you guys balance when you're putting together a formula like this, the addictive potential of nicotine versus its potential therapeutic effects? Yeah, it's a great question. And you, I think you hit the nail right on the head. I mean, that's why it's being used in studies now to look at mild cognitive impairment, looking at Alzheimer's and Parkinson's related dementia and other types of dementia and see if it can help in that capacity. And uh, it does help you lose weight. It's an anorexic. That's what nicotine is obviously famous for, for models that are two pounds that are keeping their weights down and things like that. So it's, uh, for us, the major thing was the mode of delivery in the sense that we knew that if you didn't smoke or vape nicotine, that your risk of getting addicted to it was very low. I mean, and, and also the risk long-term of nicotine that wasn't vaped or smoked is very low. People have been on patches, been using nicotine gum for years and decades, and there's no untoward risk as far as we are aware. Of course, there are fillers and other crappy things in some of those products, which we can talk about like dyes and I have a longtime patient who I love and, and she's always using the nicotine, uh, the nicotine lozenges. And they all, I was looking at the ingredients the other day. I was like, oh my God, this is like the worst thing in the world, except it has nicotine that's better this way than smoked. So like, (laughs) it's all relative. Right. But, um, but that's really what we were thinking about when it, when it came to nicotine. And then also because we are associated with a nonprofit, we always get to talk about what it seems is the sort of elephant in the room with nootropics is what happens if you overclock your system? Can you have too much of a good thing? And the answer is absolutely you can. But if you're optimizing your foundational health, if you're looking at your vitamins, your minerals, your nutrients, how well you're detoxifying uh, your cellular energy production, et cetera, looking at your gut health, which is all the things that we do in health optimization medicine, then you're going to be most able, the most primed to be able to really harness the power of these stimulants and use them over the long term as long as you're looking at that foundational aspect of things. And so in all the marketing, all the work that we do, when we're talking about these products, we're also talking about that foundation as well and optimizing that sort of essential you so that you can really truly benefit from them, but don't have the downside. And one of the things that we sometimes get actually, Evan, to your point is that we'll get people reach out to us on Instagram or Facebook and say, Hey, I got a really bad headache from your product, or I didn't feel really, really good. And this is a minority of people, to be honest, I, I extreme minority, but oftentimes if you're getting a headache from these products, or if you're not feeling well, that's often because you may not, you might not be, should be, think about maybe you shouldn't be taking stimulants right now, right? Maybe there's a reason why your body's reacting the way it is. And so we have another product, which is the methylene blue only product called just blue that came out in June of 2020. And we really decided to come out with that product because there's, we had like a huge hankering from it, like the, the biohacking community. They're like, please just make a pharmaceutical grade methylene blue product that doesn't taste like shit. And so <laughs> that's what we did. And, but the nice thing, no nicotine, no caffeine and methylene blue by itself, it has this fantastic quality of being a mitochondrial optimizer at the same time as it helps with neurotransmitter release, 
and energy production, even if there's not even some of the substrate around to make energy, which is pretty interesting. And so as a result of just having methylene blue in there, it gives you that health optimization quali quality as at the same time as some performance optimization as well. So just to, I think that answers your question as best I can, but we're always balancing this and always, I think, messaging it in a way that allows people to understand that these are not cure-alls. These are things that you can use in the context of optimizing your health. And then if you are really are just on the beginning stages of optimizing your health, think about maybe something that doesn't have stimulants in it that will support you and maybe not potentially clock your system if it's not ready to be kind of thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Or don't yeah. take it with two cups of coffee in the morning. Right. right. Yeah. Just don't be, yeah. Yeah. Don't be a biohacker about it. Right. You have like your stack of 30 things you do in the morning kind of thing. And you add something like that. To it. <laughs> yeah. No, I do it too. Uh, believe me. But, but as a, as a, as a physician, I always tell my clients one thing at a time, don't just start 20 things at the same time because mm -hmm. you don't know that right. how that's going to roll, even if they're all like synergistic and they're going to be awesome together. And then you're going to like go on your red light panel and then get out in the sun and then, you know, go in cold water. You're like, whoa, dude. Well, yeah you know and i have a lot of clients like that so sure. it's fun for me to kind of walk it back but absolutely well and that, you know that's how we kind of roll so it's but it, it is it's in and, and that's the that's the challenge with all of this right and, and that's why i i've never been a big fan of biohacking as a even a vernacular it's sure how do we know that those things are synergistic how do you know that you know getting in cold and then going in front of your red light therapy and then you know popping you know x number of milligrams of god knows what is mm -hmm. actually going to be beneficial it's in, in vacuum, one of them can test out really well, but paired, you, know, you could be doing more harm than good. Mm -hmm. It's always the question, right? And so using a methodical approach of your biohacking or your optimizing your health or being a complete human, as you guys would call it, right? It doesn't really matter the vernacular. It's, it's, for me, it's about what are you doing now? And then how are you using things over time? And how are you tracking things over time? So there is lots of different ways to track. I mean, in health optimization medicine, we use a lot of measuring. So you measure vitamins, minerals, nutrients, gut health, hormone health, circadian rhythms. There's various ways to do that with tracking devices. You guys showed me your wrist before we started. So you're measuring a whole bunch of things too. And then look, even the NIH knows that the new ways of doing science are going to be more N equals one types of studies and not the population studies that we all know and often get overturned in five or 10 years when new data comes out on the new cardiac drug or ED drug or whatever. And so all that's going to still happen, but it's the N equals one data that's really going to change how we practice and how, how I practice and how practitioners practice over time. And that's how, as an individual, you can really understand your own individual biology. Like in, uh, in health optimization medicine, we talk about it like being like, well, there's a, there was a research study that came out at Stanford maybe three or four years ago, and they called it your narcissome. And like the narcissome, you know, from the word narcissistic, right? So you know, like everything about yourself, you're looking at like your genetics, your genomics, your proteomics, your transcriptomics, your metabolomics, which are all these for like levels of uh, from your genes, everything that gets produced from them, all the, all the various aspects. And then your metabolomics is sort of like the, the, the real-time metabolites, the things that are happening at your cellular level, like that's what you can measure most easily. And that's what would actually be measure in health optimization medicine. But if you get all that data, right, and you crunch it together, and then you look at all this trackable stuff and you look at all the, that's really what's going to be happening over the next five to 10 years is that you're going to be able to like, you know, get a pin, pin break from your, you know, from your local lab, and you're going to get all this data on yourself. And then it's going to be going through these, met, these matrices where you're going to see what various risks you have and markers that you, that you can track over time. So that's where things are going, which is great, but all that data needs to be actionable and that's a different story. But then when you're doing various implementations, you still need to do things one at a time to know mm -hmm. what's happening. And so, so that's like, that doesn't change the fact that if you do 20 things at the time, your narcissism is not going to be happy either because it's going to be too many different variables. Right. So, right. And you so, have no idea what's working for you. Right. Right, exactly. Now, there are some instances when, like as a clinician, if like you have some some sort of like serious condition, or if you have an injury, like you don't want to wait to stack things like one at a time. Sometimes you just have to do what you feel can be the best synergistic potential. 
But if there's time, that's really when you want to be more methodical about it, for sure. Mm -hmm. You know, I I love what you're talking about with the N of one. And I want to kind of get back to that because we talk a lot about diagnostics and allowing those diagnostics to really lead towards any type of treatment plan or preventative plan or anything like that. Um, I kind of want to come back to the methylene blue and and really um, dive deep into that. And and you said, you know, a malaria medication way back Mm -hmm. when, you know, looking at mitochondrial optimization. So I, I don't want to... I want to address the the 800 pound uh, elephant in the room, and that's COVID. So if if hydroxychloroquine, which is a, a malaria drug, is being used to treat that, and we know that mitochondrial dysfunction seems to be one of the catalysts that's leading to catastrophic issues with COVID, is there any research that you guys have seen and or done that would show that methylene blue would have any protective benefit in in you know dealing with this shit that we're dealing with? Sure. So my first statement will be, I am making no claims that our products have any treatment effect for COVID. Okay. Let's just get out, get that out the window. Uh, I think our products... by now everybody knows that that's kind of how our <laughs> podcast goes. It's like, you know, we've got a that's lawyer cool. sitting right over there. No, that's, <laughs> that's cool. Good to say but, it too. Uh, but I have to say, it, uh, yeah. as, you know, we don't make any claims. Our product is for nootropic. Uh, it's a nootropic. That's what you're using it for. That's what our claims are for. Okay. However, now you are correct. So that methylene blue initially was made as a malaria pill. It's actually back now in vogue for malaria again, because a lot of the drugs that we used to use for malaria, malaria is now resistant to. So now methylene blue is back as being used as something, as something for malaria. And back before there were antibiotics, they would use methylene blue as an antibacterial and antifungal, especially for urinary tract infections, because methylene blue concentrates in your urine. Now, both of you probably have had this experience if you've used our products or if you've used methylene blue before. Uh, the favorite is a combination with B vitamins that give you that neon green combination when you combine, <laughs> because methylene blue is gonna make your urine blue, right? Mm-hmm. And so that's a common, and I, we'd say a beneficial side effect, you know it's working, if you know it's, it's concentrating in your urine. Uh, so, they would, uh, so they would use methylene blue and it actually, there's actually, there was actually studies, not studies, there was stories and songs made up about methylene blue by the soldiers in World War II in the Pacific theater that were using methylene blue to prevent things like, like the trench foot and other fungal infections that were happening in the jungles over there. So, but nobody liked it because it made every, everybody's pee blue and, you know, et cetera. And so it kind of got out of, <laughs> came out of fashion. Wait, 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 when, wait, when you say et cetera, is, is that to imply some other <laughs> bodily fluid excretion? You know? So at very, very high doses, which okay. are not doses that we can, that we give here at transcriptions or that are really even necessary unless very significant and very specific situations like sepsis and some very significant trauma, we can use very high methylene blue, high doses of methylene blue. It can make uh, your secretions blue. Um, including and also your poop blue at very, very high doses. So um, that's not typically how it's used, but as far as coronavirus goes to go up there. So right before the pandemic, there was a study that was done looking at coronaviruses combining uh, irradiated light. So the spectrum of light at the low, at the at lower spectrum. So UVC light along with um, methylene blue uh, was a very significant uh, killer of coronaviruses. Okay. So the combination of the two. Now, since then, there's been several studies that have looked at methylene blue and looked at coronavirus. And one interesting one in the beginning of the pandemic, but I don't know if it's been updated, is that they use methylene blue, blue also for cancer, especially at high doses. And so because methylene blue, so the thing about methylene blue at low doses, it's an antioxidant. It helps with uh, neurotransmitter release, it helps with energy production, but at high doses, it actually has the opposite effect. It's actually an oxidant. It's an oxidative molecule. So it makes uh, potentially more stress on the system. And so that's potentially something you maybe want in, in a cancer, for example. So it's been used in cancer for many, many years. And so they, they, had, they had a population of cancer patients that were in France that were all um, taking methylene blue and none of them were getting coronavirus. And they, were, and they actually showed some interesting data related to that. I haven't seen an update on that. Um, there's certainly been interest in uh, methylene blue in various ways. Um, within the whole pandemic. There have been some studies that have looked at methylene blue plus certain spectrums of light to see if it would kill COVID-19. And the answer seems to be yes, but all very, very low numbers of people and all very, you know, very sort of fringe, let's call it, compared to what might be available. Now, we have heard reports of people using methylene blue in the long COVID stage and the people that have had post-COVID syndrome that have had mitochondrial dysfunction as as a result of that. 
Now, again, we don't make any claims about any of that stuff with our product, but certainly it is very compelling, uh, very compelling some of the work that's being done because of its work on mitochondrial function. Absolutely. So yes, we can use it for fungus, virus, for bacteria, um, but most of the time it's not used that way anymore because we have antibiotics for those things and everybody loves antibiotics because those are so great for us, right? So, um, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Mm, yeah. Lots of thoughts on that one. Yeah. Well, and very it, interesting. It, it kind of seems that, you know, ultimately with all of the antibiotic resistance that we're seeing that we might, as you pointed out, kind of start heading back to some of these older treatments Indeed. for that very reason is, is all of the resistance, you know, malaria, antibiotics, you know, everything that you've gone through. It's mm -hmm. maybe we should just get a bunch of pharmaceutical methylene blue around here. Maybe, but I have it's a question about the urine thing, because we were just having this conversation okay. right before we jumped on the podcast. Evan was like, I don't know if you realize this is your, does your pee turn blue when you take this? And I said, no, but you said yours does. Yeah. But here's, here's the thing. Let's, let's be honest. I'm a guy I'm looking. There's, a, there's an <laughs> element true. of this. Yeah. Like, I mean, I'm not saying I don't look. <laughs> I'm just, it's, it's a lot more I have to turn around to flush <laughs> so it's like I see it. it's just a lot more obvious for us guys yeah. I, I mean, well, I it, it also depends point. on the dose too um so if you're yeah. depending on how much of the glucanatine or the just blue you're using if you use a quarter um it's typically not going to be as blue obviously as if you take a full trochee mm -hmm. so there's that part of it as well um and sometimes it also depends on if you've eaten beforehand I find that if you've had a big meal and then you have your trochee it may not concentrate as much because it might be it's like a slower absorption as yeah. a result now, most of the absorption is coming from your mouth. That's mm -hmm. the idea from the trochee, by the way. So the trochees go in your mouth because they have a direct route to your bloodstream, to your, your facial mucosa, uh, goes directly into your, like your, your, the, the venous system right into your head mm -hmm. and going into your brain. So that's why we use it. Some of it you're, you are going to swallow, but the idea with the trochee is that you're not swallowing a lot of the ingredients because when you swallow something, it has to go through what's called first past uh, metabolism in your liver. And then liver usually uh, makes something a little bit less active than it would have if it just got directly in you, like if you got like in an IV, for example. That's yeah. called bioavailability, right? So, okay. um, so a lot of supplements that you take, the bioavailability is going to be somewhere between 10 and 20% of what you're taking. So the idea of, uh, of a trochee is that we're getting a lot of the mucosal absorption so that we're bypassing a lot of the absorption and bioavailability issues. So I find that uh, for people that have told me that that doesn't concentrate in their urine as much. It's often because they've had like a big meal beforehand or something. If they're, if you're fasted, it typically will concentrate more. And also like, like I was alluding to, if you're taking other vitamins that have a color to them in your urine, like B vitamins, for example, I think it's like B2, for example, like you're going to have like a yellow, a very bright yellow urine, and then you're mm. going to have like blue. And then it comes off like a greenish kind of in between. Concerning. So, <laughs> concerning. Yeah, it looks concerning. <laughs> yeah, Infected but it's, luck. <laughs> but it's not, it's very normal and it's it's very yeah, gotcha. it's very much part of the process, right? So yes. yeah, I was just, from what you said, I was just thinking, oh, I wonder if I'm absorbing it as much as Evan is, or if he's excreting more of it and I'm not, I wonder if I'm actually absorbing it. And so that's no. where my mind went. No, it's, okay. it's, it's, it's kind of the natural ebbs and flows for people. You'll yeah. have days where you'll see that it's concentrated more and days uh, where it's not. I mean, I've had some, I, some theories about, you know, mitochondrial uptake and depending on how, uh, how energized or how energetic people are and how much more support that they need, whether that would change how fast you, you see the blue color. Mm -hmm. um, and methylene blue also does change color if, uh, when it becomes more of an antioxidant as well, in the sense that uh, when, because in the body, it, it, it actually, when it combines with, with free electrons, which are the reactive oxygen species, it actually changes color as well. So it changes from blue to, to like a clear whitish kind of color. So I've wondered about this. There are actually a number of drugs that have been made from methylene blue um, that are what are called reduced. And they the reduced that they don't have color anymore, um, but they still seem effective. So this is me being very just kind of off the cuff with you with some ideas as to maybe why, but in, in essence, it it's still going to be effective at the cellular level, whether you're, um, yeah. you're, you're peeing it out all the time at once, or you're peeing it out slower and not seeing all the blue effects. Yeah. As far as I so definitely feel the cognitive benefits. So I know it's working there at least. Oh, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. And I think, you know, we, about a week, week and a half, 
Mm -hmm. Um, it's been fantastic. So, you know, and obviously guys, uh, we'll put some information on the show notes. You know, it's one of those things that, you know, we wanted to get through the science first and explain that to you before we start recommending a nicotine product, knowing that, you know, there's obviously going to be some backlash from that, but, um, it's a great deal that you guys will have, uh, you know, just make sure you check out the show notes for this and we'll put all the information there. Now, one of the things you just said, um, doc is, is that, and this is kind of interesting is if you had a higher level of reactive oxygen species, if you're, if you're more, inflamed, so to speak, or if you've got mitochondrial dysfunction, could that be one of the reasons why you wouldn't see some of your excretions be that blue is that you're fighting more mitochondrial, um, you know, dysfunction, more reactive oxygen species in the system. It's purely one of my theories. I have no scientific basis for it right now, but I've, I've thought about it a lot, especially with the various types of people that you've mentioned in the, in the, uh, in the pandemic variety as well, especially. And as I've had heard, heard variable things about excretion and concentration in the urine and also, um, effects, cognitive effects and, um, hands down blue canatine gives a fantastic cognitive effect. People feel more focus, more energy overall, more verbal fluidity, uh, more flow. Um, but the blue is a little bit more variable for people. And I didn't know we were going to go here today. This is something that I've been thinking more about lately. Um, and I've wondered about it. Is, is it because people that have higher need for, you know, for, uh, for antioxidant potential, are they holding on to more of it or are they, or are they reducing more of it so that less of it's coming out blue? It's, it's serious. It's just a theory. Um, but what I find in my clients in, in people that have a lot of chronic medical illness, of course, but, and you probably know this, you both probably know this, but in high level athletes, they have a shit ton of oxidative stress too. Mm-hmm. And they are barely holding on a lot of times when I look at their vitamins and minerals and antioxidant levels because they don't know how to recover, right? And so um, in those people as well, I wonder, well, maybe that's why we're seeing this, you know, this leuco, it's called leuco, leucomethylene blue. It changes from methylene blue to reduced methylene blue. I don't know, but something we should, we should certainly be looking into more. I'm not sure exactly how we do that, but it's, it's something that I've, it's, it's been in, in, in my, in my frame of reference. And the other thing about blue canatine and, and even just blue is that they're very low doses of methylene blue. We're talking about five milligrams in blue canatine and in just blue, it's 16 milligrams of methylene blue. Now, if you look around the internets for various other places to get methylene blue, you'll find much higher doses of these things. But the research really is around the five to 16 milligrams for cognitive enhancement for nootropic potential. For things like antiviral, antibacterial, that typically is a higher dose, Let's, to be honest. Um, but combining it with various sections of light, which is what a lot of our, uh, a lot of our users uh, will be doing, whether it be red light or sunlight or whatever, and we're getting great reports from a mitochondrial enhancement perspective, at least like macro on the macro scale, more energy, more focus, et cetera. So yeah, super interesting thoughts and theories, but just that at this point. Just well, this. And you brought up something that we were just talking about uh, earlier today, and, and that's the uh, propensity for some of these CrossFit athletes who just come out of the CrossFit games who actually got COVID and we're sidelined with it. We're having yeah. long hauler syndrome. We're in the hospital. And you're looking at these, some of these people as right. they're the, the fittest epi- people on earth pretty much. And they're, in yeah, and I'll, and you'd think so, but then yeah. you realize like what, you know, if they're eating that much, are they borderline diabetic because they're insulin resistant, consuming five to 10,000 calories a day. They've right. got so much oxidative stress because of what they're doing. So right. what visually looks like the, you know, the epitome of health for all intents and purposes could be just, as you said, on the cusp of, I've seen it so many times. Yeah. Because I do a lot of blood work the health optimization medicine, that nonprofit, I'm a practitioner as well. So I do that work with my own clients and I have a lot of athletes that I work with. And it's almost always the case because especially higher level athletes that have coaches and that are doing professional sports or, or high level sports, like they're not recovering and they're not giving themselves the vitamins, minerals, nutrients that they need to recover. And even if they're having five to 10,000 calories, I mean, I've seen it countless times. These guys are like on the top of their game, but their vitamin levels and their antioxidant levels are like, we're in the fucking tank. And Mm -hmm. I'm like, guys, if you don't get this done now, you're going to be done performing, done competing in the next five years. And Dr. Ted, who I've worked with now for the last five years or six years, he's seen this for decades. You know, if 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 he can work on that optimizing strategy early, like the longevity that you have in these particular careers is significantly higher. But this is like a preemptive kind of strategy. 
And so you're right. I mean, it's terrible to see you know, the actor or like the, the, the athlete that's in the ICU ward because of COVID. And you're like, how could this be there? They're exercising and, and they're eating so well. But like, you know, what we look at, you know, it's just like the marathon runner who finishes their marathon and then just what dies, right? The first guy yeah. that ever did a marathon, the Greek guy, right? That, that ran from whatever town it was to the town of Marathon, got there and then deliver the message and just died, right? Mm -hmm. So we know that marathons aren't healthy for us. So, and yeah. the first guy showed that, you know, even though that's what we still do and, and people compete in Ironmans and, and triathletes and, and or triathlons. Not to say that stuff is not great and fantastic and you can be really fit doing that, but like anything else, too much of a good thing, right? Mm -hmm. So. Absolutely. Yeah. So we just talked about, um, you know, the dosing of methylene blue, but I wanted to go back to the dosing of nicotine. Cause I was doing some research on the amount of nicotine in one cigarette is between six and 20 milligrams. I think it's, it's right. kind yeah. of substantial compared to what is in your product. Right. So do we really need that much nicotine to have a cognitive benefit? Obviously not. Cause it's no. nominal compared to what's in a cigarette. Yeah. Thank you for bringing that up. I mean, nicotine in a cigarette, it depends on the cigarette and depends on the product, but somewhere between six and about 28 milligrams mm -hmm. per cigarette or per, you know, vaping hit actually, you know, the vaping products are the worst because they have so much more nicotine and other additives and you get so much, much, actually much quicker than you do in a cigarette. Um, but the, the trochies that we developed only have one milligram of nicotine in a full trochee mm -hmm. and that in each of the trochies can actually be scored. They are scored. And so you can break it up, break them up into uh, quarters. You can actually have a quarter of a trochee at a time. So for me, my dose is a quarter trochee and that's one quarter of one milligram of nicotine, right? And even if you have a full trochee, that's just one milligram. When mm -hmm. most replacement products are two milligrams or four milligrams. So if you get like a gum or if you get a loss, uh, some sort of lozenge, or if you get a patch, the patches are higher because there's less absorption. But in general, we get you're using a very low dose of nicotine and you're seeing a pretty significant cognitive benefit. And that's sure. really where the research is, is really showing is that you don't need a huge amount of nicotine. You just need a little bit to get to these receptors in your brain to release a bunch of neurotransmitters that are responsible for learning. So your, mm -hmm. your dopamine, your glutamate, um, your serotonin, you know, you're getting all these neurotransmitters that are being released that help you with learning and actually blood flow improvements in the areas of the brain that I was talking about before. And so, yeah, I mean, we're really emphatic about very low dose. Don't smoke or vape your nicotine. Let it dissolve slowly in a trochee like we have formulated. And you're, you're good. You just follow the box directions and not have four, more than four trochees per day. Excuse me. And, and very few people do that anyway. Typically mm -hmm. with blue canatine, it's a three to five hour hit of feeling like you've launched, right? You have focus, the creativity, et cetera. And so we, most of our blue user, users are having them in a sort of a targeted way when they know that they have three to four hours where they really got to be on, or they have three to four hours where they really need to write copy or, or write a lecture or give a lecture. Although your tongue will be blue. That's okay. It's part of the fun. It's a good, it's a, good it's a great conversation marketing starter. strategy. Yeah. Oh, it's a good conversation starter too. Right. Mm -hmm. So when I first started doing it, or we were testing it before we launched it, I had a couple lectures. People come up to me after I finished my lecture, they were looking at me funny and they're like, is your tongue blue? What, what candy <laughs> did you have? And I would be like, yeah, yeah, we're testing this new product. And it's for all the reasons that we've been talking about on the podcast. And like, wow, your tongue is really blue. <laughs> <laughs> so it is shocking. And, and I completely mm -hmm. get that. But the good thing is we actually have a lot of medical providers that are using uh, methylene blue now for various reasons that they decide to use, um, but they're all wearing their masks. So nobody yeah. knows that their tongue is yeah, blue anyway. Exactly. So, yeah. Is there any permanent yeah. like staining issues you have to worry about? So no, I mean, as long as you don't have, if you're using it with braces or veneers, that could be a problem. So don't, if you have anything sort of implanted in your mouth, um, you want to talk to your dentist before using it, but methylene blue has been used for decades, actually, as a stain for actually looking for mouth cancers uh, in, in dentistry. And so actually, interestingly enough, um, it's a good story. Uh, when we were first testing these products, well, I, had, I, have, uh, I have one of the, I have the crown in the back of my mouth and I was using the methylene blue, blue product and my crown fell out. And, and I was like, oh no, methylene blue has, has did something to my crown. But no, what actually happened was that I had 
uh, decay underneath my crown and the methylene blue is trying to heal it. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> and the oh, wow. Yeah. And so then, then because the, my crown became collateral damage. And so I went to the, the dentist is like, wow, it's great to use using methylene blue. You don't really have much decay here anymore, but I got to replace your crown. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> oh, okay. And so Super after that, yeah. So after that, I, 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 we talked to a number of dentists about this because of course, one of the major things that people ask me is what you just asked, Evan, Evan is does it have any permanent issues to your to your mouth and or to your teeth. And the second thing is they'll ask me is, is there any way to get the blue to go away faster? And I can talk about that in a minute, but, but as far as the, is, is any permanent issues to your teeth? The answer is no. Uh, as long as you don't have like veneers or braces or something, because it can certainly stain those things. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. But as far as making the blue go away faster, there's some very easy things that you can do. Um, eating will make it go away faster. Hot liquids will make it go away faster. And also baking soda. So sodium bicarbonate as well. And so you can swish around the baking soda and that seems to help the, uh, the blue go away a little bit faster. We have a couple more posts about it on Instagram that people can look into if they really want the blue to go away faster. And I get it. Not everybody can have a blue tongue. Not everybody can go to their meetings looking like they've blown a smurf, as you said, Evan, I didn't say it, you said it. So, um, but in the end, we like to say, we changed the conversation. This is about blue being the new smart and that blue jobs can save the world, right? Having a blue job is something you should be proud of, right? So, yeah. um, and, and also as a way to, to actually show people that there's new things that you can do to optimize your brain function. I mean, we've had, one of my fa favorite stories is we had one of our users give it to their grandmother. And this is, something that we only recommend if it's okay with their doctor and all those kinds of things, of course. But her grand, her grandmother was like, I think of her late eighties, early nineties. And she had like, you know, senile dementia. She didn't remember like a lot of things. She kind of remember some, but you know, it wasn't like an Alzheimer's dementia. She gave her blue canity. Um, and she started telling the, the grandmother started telling her granddaughter stories about her time in Mexico when she was like living to like to the ends of like the Mexican, Mexican, I don't know it was the Mexican revolution, but that's like the 1890s. It had to be something after that, but it was like some significant things from her childhood and stuff that she'd never heard before. And so it'd been super cool to hear stories about, you know, some of our users that are, you know, typical ages that as you'd imagine using nootropics, giving them to their grandparents and seeing these amazing things happen in, in them as well. And so just, I think it just gives you an indication of the power of some of these ingredients, nicotine and methylene blue specifically. And so it yes- yeah, it's funny. I mean, I've worked in brain health for years on the formulation side, and and I was, you know, I, I'm skeptical on everything, and you know, but understood the science and then took it in. And I got to tell you, ladies and gentlemen, it was fantastic. It's, uh, you know, the experience itself of of feeling clear, of feeling focused, of not feeling jittery from having too much caffeine is is incredible, mm -hmm. and it did that. Um, now, one thing I actually did is I combined it with alpha glycerol phosphocholine, alpha GPC, sure. Sure. Um, and then I actually solved Einstein's unified theory of physics. So, um, <laughs> well, perfect. Now we're all in a good place. Now we yeah. are, yeah. <laughs> uh, and, and we'll be talking about that next week uh, on the podcast. Perfect. Oh, yeah, you that. can marry those two those two theories and bring them into one. You'll you certainly mm -hmm. win your Nobel prize, my friend. Now, is this safe to take every day? Yeah, good question. So, so again, we have two, right? We have blue canatine, which mm -hmm. is the, the four ingredient combo. And we have just blue, which is our methylene blue only product. Okay. We typically, in the way that we've, I think, frame this for most people, for, for our users is that just blue is a mitochondrial optimizer. It's something that you can use every day in low doses and have a fantastic experience with and also support your system. As far as using something like blue canatine every day, I think the major thing to consider is that it's a stimulant. Should you, you be using stimulants every day? And in my opinion, in our opinion as a company, that's really your decision to make. Most of our users will, will not use blue canatine every day. They'll use it several times a week for the targeted reasons that I've described, but they're typically taking days off or if they're using it every day for a week or two, they will take days off after that. Just like if you guys stop caffeine for a little while, it's nice to be able to come back to caffeine and feel the effects of not having caffeine in your system for a couple of weeks or a couple of months or whatever. So the idea is that you prime your receptors when you stop doing something, right? Mm -hmm. And so that they become more sensitive. And so with blue canatine, that's typically the way we, 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 we frame it for 
our audience is that it's not something most people will take every day. It's something you can take several times per week in a targeted way. Or if you have like a deadline, and you got to get shit done. You take it every day, you do it, and then you take a break and then you come back to it after that. And as always, framing it in the way of looking at optimizing your health, looking at your foundation, making sure that you're that you're putting some energy into that too. And so that your stimulants aren't overclocking your system over time. You know, I, I absolutely love the fact that you, uh, you said that Dr. Scott is, is, you know, so much, so many times in this industry and in health and wellness, and especially if there's a commercial opportunity, it's people yep. are like, Oh, just take that every single day. And, and the reality is there's probably nothing out there that you need to take every single day water. And that's pretty much it. Right. So unless you're a breatharian. <laughs> there you, you know go. about breatharians they just breathe in prana no water nothing that's there we go. yeah i i haven't met one but yeah i've spoken know. to one before um he very interesting guy so a breatharian for your audience if they don't know these are people that that feel that you do not need any sustenance any water any food you can get all that you need energetically from the air that you breathe and there are various people that have been documented that can go 15 20 30 days without any food or water somehow. I don't recommend that for 99.99% of people, by the way. But anyway, but I, I, I do feel we need to breathe. I, I agree. Every yeah. Time. So <laughs> oxygen is, you know, we, let's start with That's oxygen, important. then water, you know, it's Maslow's hierarchy, right? <laughs> yes. Yes, indeed. Yeah. So um, I, I agree with you, Evan, I would say is that I think that for, for the most part, cycling on and off of things is really good for uh, metabolic flexibility. And, and like that's, I think you guys have talked about that on podcasts before, mm -hmm. right? You're, to, you're, for your body to be the most resilient, it needs to rotate and do different things. You don't do the same exercises at the gym. Um, now there are some exceptions. You should try to get the same sleep patterns every night. If you can, that's not a stress that you need, but when it comes to most things, it's good to, to vary things up and, and change it up. Just you know, like I'm glad you brought positions. that up, uh, Dr. Scott, because I think that's a perfect segue into the other product that you guys have just uh, launched or will be launching here. And that's the, uh, you know, that's kind of your nighttime product. Well, it's our stress relief and tension product. So whenever you have stress and tension, that is a good time to take our new product, which is called Trocom. And Can I just get that in an IV? That's pretty much, you know, you know <laughs> stress and tension is my, my I, resting pulse. I was going to ask if you can have both, right? Like the, the blue canatine and the, and the other one that you guys just made, if you could do that at the same time to, you know, take away the stress and get shit done. Well, the idea really is that anxiety is a fantastically terrible performance enhancer right? Mm -hmm. We know that if we have anxiety, if we have stress, it certainly doesn't make you more productive, right? So <laughs> the idea with this particular product is, especially for those that are looking to use it for performance, is just like blue canatine and just blue, it's a titratable product. It's quartered. So you can start off with a quarter of it, go to a half and go to a full. And by the way, for blue canatine, our average user uses about a half of a trochee at a time for their optimal dose. If you have a lot of lean body mass, sometimes more, sometimes a full trochee, but in general, it's a half of a trochee. And so for trochom, it's the same deal. About a quarter of the trochee is gonna take the, that edge off of the end of that feeling of stress and tension. And so that certainly can help your performance in any capacity, whether it be your mental performance, your sexual performance or whatever. Like if you're taking off a little bit of that edge, it's gonna help you relax. The more of the trocom that you take, the more relaxed that you're going to feel. And that's typically, um, and we've been using this in lots of different people as, as a way to kind of test the dosing and test the strategies. And we really feel like it's going to be about the same, about a half of the trochee is going to be the most optimal dose for most people. And if you're one of those people, especially that has lots of ruminating thoughts before bed, this is something that's been very helpful for our initial testers and something that can help you go to bed more easily. Oftentimes, those ruminating thoughts can keep you up at night. It's that anxiety before you go to sleep kind of feeling. The meditation and obviously having a sleep routine. So again, taking Trocom does not make it so you shouldn't do anything else at night to optimize your sleep or help with your anxiety. But this is just another very powerful tool in the toolbox to take that edge off. And uh, it's an interesting combination of ingredients, of course, because we do things very interestingly here at Troscriptions. Mm -hmm. We're using Kava which you've probably heard of. Uh, we're using CBD, which I'm sure you've heard of. We're using something called cannabigerol, which is CBG, another another cannabinoid. Um, we have a number of different cannabinoids in our products, but this one has CBG. And then we're using another product that's called nicotinyl GABA, which is a very uh, highly absorbable 
product that works like GABA in the brain. And GABA is an inhibitory neurotransmitter. It helps slow down the system, basically. And so you have this four ingredient combination, all very low dose, just like glucanatine was very low dose. You mentioned, by the way, in glucanatine that it was just one milligram of nicotine. It's only 50 milligrams of caffeine, which is a quarter cup of coffee. And CBDs in glucanatine is five milligrams, nothing in blue, five milligrams. But back to Trocom, all very, very low doses as well, synergizing together. And um, it's this synergistic combination um, that makes your mouth a little bit numb because kava will make your mouth a little bit oh, numb, yeah. if you guys are familiar. So yeah. it's, it's going to make your mouth just a little bit numb. That goes away in about five to 10 minutes. And then you'll start feeling this sort of smooth, I call it Trocom and carry on, really, like really just you know, or, or <laughs> Trocom the fuck down if you need to. I like that one too. Yeah. yeah. So I'm working on them. We're, we're, this is new. By the time this podcast comes out, we'll, we'll probably be out in, in business, but uh, we're working on our, our marketing for it. But really the deal here is that we all have mild, mild stress, mild tension, or even moderate, you know, on a relatively, re, a relatively frequent basis. So all of us can really benefit from this. And as far as if you have more severe anxiety or more severe stress and tension, I think this might be another tool in the toolbox. And so we're talking to more practitioners and working with them. I'm going to be start doing more clinical work as well, which is I'm really excited about because uh, I was a primary care doctor in an office for one year. That's all I could take was one year. And about 70% of the things that I saw were either anxiety or depression. And everybody gets a prescription when they come out the door. And if you have non-prescription alternatives that work on stress and, and tension, I, I'm really excited about what we can do with this particular product. And so I hope uh, in the next several months that we do, we're going to do more testing with practitioners and their patients and really get a good sense of you know, how it can be used in that form, in that framework. Of course, I don't want anybody stopping their drugs and taking ours and taking our supplements without talking to their physicians and uh, do things responsibly, all those kinds of things. Um, but the beautiful thing about it is that it's going to be an alternative and it's going to be something that's, again, formulated by us. We're physicians. It's going to be precision dose. It's going to be pharmaceutical grade. And it's it's going to have a lot of testing behind it before it comes uh, becomes orange in your mouth. <laughs> yeah. Wonderful. Well, and, I, and I can tell you this, you know, we, we are big on sleep here and that's tracking sleep, that's sleep hygiene so that you're preparing yourself for sleep, that's putting your phone down so you don't have blue light activation before you crawl into bed. Like, you know, we've, you know, ladies and gentlemen, you've heard us wax on this subject a lot, but I, I will say this. I took that, um, you know, I, I took Trocalm and then I actually added five migs of melatonin to it. Mm, okay. And um, I think my HRV jumped to 107 and I mean, it was, yeah. It was like what percentage my, increase would that be for you? Oh, it was probably 25, 28%. Uh, and impressive. then, um, you know, my, uh, my resting heart rate, which is always really low is around 47. So it was a really good solid night's sleep with that combination. And again, I don't take a lot of stress and anxiety with me to, to bed anyway, but um, th that was an amazing experience. So yeah. excited to try more of that. And we'll, we'll definitely have that, uh, that information in the show notes, cause it should be commercial by the time that this thing launches, right? Yeah. Yeah, it should be. Yeah. And it, it'll be on our website, transcriptions.com. And it'll be a product there that you can easily buy as you can buy transcriptions, blue canatine and just blue, but yeah, we're really, we're really excited for that one. And, and actually as a sneak peek, we do have something coming out specifically for sleep, probably, uh, sometime in 2022. It Ooh, all works out well. Cool. So, and but this one, we didn't mean for it to be a sleep aid, but it very well might be uh, for the reasons why mm -hmm. you've experienced and why things that help with uh, with ruminating thoughts help before bed as well. So again, do your meditations, do your sleep routines, optimize your health, optimize your cellular foundation. Mm -hmm. This is what we do at Health Optimization Medicine, and just don't forget about that stuff. And I think that one thing that biohackers seem to forget a lot too, Evan, is that, uh, is that they forget about that foundation because they're like, they're, what's the new technology? What's the new pill? What's the new performance enhancing whatever that I'm going to do mm -hmm. to optimize my HRV and to do this? And, but again, if you're not, one of the things that I think, and Dr. Ted actually mentioned this at a summit a couple of years ago, when I think one of the things that I think health optimization medicine does is actually provide a framework for biohacking because it gives you this framework where you're optimizing your cellular foundation at the found at the foundational level and then on building on top of that everything that you want you know i also specialize in hyperbaric oxygen therapy and so but before i put somebody into a chamber 
I often, I very often want to optimize that foundation first. It's like the bottom of your pyramid, right? Mm -hmm. So it's, and that's how I've, and that's why I've really created my own health practice is that somebody comes to me, they have an acute fill in the blank. And it's not just about getting into a chamber or taking a pill. It's about optimizing that foundation first. Now, if you need pills and technologies along the way, awesome. You can absolutely use those. And then there's certainly going to be bottlenecks along your path to optimizing your health. And that's why these things are really good too. You can take some blue canatine, you can take some just blue or some trocom while you're optimizing your health. That's like the perfect world where we're you know, really, what we're looking to do at transcriptions is, is to democratize enlightenment here, right? We're looking to give you ways to optimize your own, your own way in this world, your own, your own person, you know? So that's the idea, big picture. That's a great Absolutely. big picture. You know, it's something we talk about here all the time, right? Mm -hmm. Is, is you're not going to undo a lifetime of bad health choices with a kale smoothie and, and nor are you going to do that with an ice bath or stand, standing in front of a red light for 15 minutes. Those are all the optimizations that you do after you've created the healthy foundation. And that begins with the diagnostic testing, as you've said, yes. uh, Dr. Yes. Scott, that begins with, you know, really resetting the foundation. Uh, you know, a house on quicksand isn't going to, isn't going to work, but a house on a good solid foundation is going to continue to build and build and build. And so that's what we want to do. That's why we bring you uh, guests like we've had uh, here on this show to talk about all things neurocognitive, uh, cellular optimization, mitochondrial, one of my favorite things in the whole wide world to talk about. They're great um, bacteria. We're very, we're very lucky for those bacteria. Oh God, yes. That's, and, and that's just the like, you know, how many people are, are succumbing to COVID because of mitochondrial dysfunction, because of metabolic inflexibility and where COVID should have been the giant wake up call for all of the things that we're doing wrong in our society. It's become a political thing. And that's a whole conversation for another time. So I'm not going to, you know, I'm still on blue right now. So I'm going to use that brain function for something else. <laughs> Indeed. Sorry. All good things. Yeah. And yes. I resonate with everything you just said, Evan. It's an interesting world we live in. I have seen, I mean, maybe it's out of fear to some degree, but there has been a proportion of people that have taken the reins of this and said, okay, I'm going to optimize my health. Mm -hmm. And certainly there's been people that have gone the other way that haven't left their house with potato chips waiting for a vaccine, right? There's certainly been those people too. And that's okay. Everybody responds to these things the way they're going to respond to them. However, the conversation has changed a little bit, I think. And I think that at the very least, we can have this conversation that, like we're having now about, look, metabolic inflexibility, mitochondrial function, and then have something real to show people as to potentially the outcome if you don't, right? And, and I think that's pretty powerful. And that's something that I've worked with uh, in my own practice over the last year and a half, reframing this, right? This is not about COVID. This is about optimizing your mitochondrial function, your cellular function, so you're resilient for anything that might happen, whether it be COVID or something else, because there always will be something else. So I'm with you, and we can use our blue for something else for the rest of the day. Totally cool. <laughs> cool. Uh Dr. Scott, thank you so much for being on the show. Uh, this has been fantastic. Uh, obviously, we covered a lot. I think that we could, we'd love to get back on and talk about the health optimization component, especially the nonprofit. Sure. Uh, that's something that I think our audience would like to listen to and obviously like to support. Anything that we can do to, as you said, democratize anything health and wellness, get the appropriate information out there and get people doing the things that they can do to take health and wellness into their own hands is going to be a step for all of us in the right direction towards making this world a healthier place for people and a healthier place for the planet in general. That's right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. As Dr. Ted likes to say, if we can just move the needle just a little bit, we can make a huge amount of good. So mm -hmm. a huge amount of benefit. So I'm with you. So yeah, I'm happy to come back on and I really appreciate you guys doing the work that you're doing and giving a platform for crazy doctors like myself and others uh, that are really trying to, I think, push the envelope in, in the health focused way. Uh, and and do it in a way that's, that's fun too. It's not just about being serious and, and trying yeah. to be all clinical about things, but let's do this in a fun way that mm -hmm. really can change the world and, you know, not have to be so boring about it. So yeah. like Absolutely. To so, we don't have to be so boring. Absolutely. We could be blue. We can be blue. Yes. Blue you. Yeah. Blue, not yeah. boring. You're my boy, blue. That's another <laughs> one. Yeah. Um, blue. You can sing that. Yeah, but yeah, it just goes on and on and on. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, again, check the show notes. Um, we've got a special deal for you if you're interested in trying this product. Jan and I have both sampled it. I can tell you, I'm not going to speak for you, but I can tell you that it is um, a pretty impressive neurocognitive kick. And, and yeah. as two people who like, uh, you know, that type of element in our life, I think, you know, experimenting with supplements that can really help with cognitive function. This is one that I, I would definitely put at the top of the, the list. So I actually really liked my workouts on it too. Yeah. 
Yep, a lot of good reports on that too. Extra energy bump, more focus when you work out too, so you don't get too distracted. Definitely. Meditations, it's got that focus piece, so it can kind of go in a lot of different ways. It kind of covers everything. Yeah. <laughs> we like it, yeah. It's like coconut yeah. oil. It's good for everything. <laughs> <laughs> just just douse, your, douse your salads with nothing blue next time. See how that goes. Yeah. There we go. <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for tuning in for another edition of the Complete Human Podcast with your host, Jenna Breslin and Evan DeMarco. We will see you next week. Bye, everyone.